All right, we are live in Twitch world, and I am incredibly excited to have multi-world champion, Hall of Fame Classic 2023 Pro Singles champion, true professional Foozer. And there's not a ton of those true professionals. We're going to have Lynn Tran here in a minute. I just want to take a second to introduce her. Something I want to talk to her about. I didn't know she was a childhood chess pro. Like she, She's a pro. I mean, a great player in chess. I didn't really know the detail of that. I want to talk to her about that. Also studied business business administration. Um, and now she's a professional foosball athlete. And she does speaking. She does coaching, uh, key, keynote speaking. She does um, she does corporate events. And we're going to talk to her about some of that. So uh, I'm not going to wait any further. I'm going to bring in <clears throat> Lynn Tran. Hello. Hey, Lynn. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good. How are you? Good. I appreciate you in the middle. I mean, it's middle of the night for you, right? Was it 10 Yeah, I see outside it's dark, you know. I just came back from my Bonzini training because the Bonzini World Series is starting oh. next week. So uh, just right in time, back in the house, eat something and then go live uh, with you. Well, well, this episode is called <laughs> Be the Machine. And, and I think it's so fitting. You just came back from Bonzini training. I got. I got to immediately start there. I mean, what? Are, so you're training for the Bonzini Worlds? Is that a regular practice session you do? I mean, talk to me about that. No, it's like it's crazy though. This year is like kind of crazy because I I went to Hall of Fame and uh, played Tornado, and I was like, okay, I I'm not going to fly to uh, Vegas and uh, do nothing. You know, I I really wanted to be people prepared and then uh, I played two months tornado only and uh, I also didn't play for example a Galando tournament a master's tournament just before it was like I think two weeks before I would fly to Toronto because I was in Toronto before in Vegas and um, that's one of a good that's a good tournament this master's series on Galando in Vienna but I, I decided that it's not smart to you know play that one before before all because it's different because then I had to train to Galando and then go back to Tornado and that's not something that is so easy you know so I just thought about like okay just just go all in with just only Tornado so yeah so I had like uh, a month uh, full of practice uh, of Tornado and then I have been uh, in Toronto uh, playing only Tornado of course and then after that uh, to Las Vegas, so just only two months of tornado. So and then I came back and I knew fuck. Oh, sorry, I did a set it on the stream. <laughs> I said, damn, I have to train a little bit now because uh, we had the German championship last week, you know. Uh -huh. And I was uh, the defending. Um, how we call that in English? I don't even know. Uh, I defended both. Like I, I, I won them last year. Both. Yes, right. Defending is right. Yeah. Yeah, right. And then um, I was like, how, how do I, how, do, how do I do this? You know, like I had like one and a half week, weeks to like get back into the time zone of Germany and be like, okay, now Leonard and stuff. And you would might think it's not too hard. To adapt to adjust back from uh -huh. tornado to Leonard, but uh -huh. it is pretty hard yeah. in a way like uh, all the crispy and precise, accurate shots and passes, and also the setup and everything. It's so much harder on Leonard to 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 get a clean setup all the time than on tornado. And I didn't know that before. <laughs> really? I, I, yeah. I would have thought, actually, yeah. before Hall of Fame, I would have thought that Leonard is the easiest table to have a good setup on. But now I, I do think that Tornado beats it <clears throat> because uh, the ball on Tornado is actually always round. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's easier to have a consistent setup. Um, and because the ball is so heavy and the men of the tornado are so white, uh, it's easier to like control the ball, obviously. Yeah. So after two months of practice, only tornado and playing tornado, I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I, <need to> go <laughs> back to and I mean, German championship is, I don't know, in different countries, it's maybe different. But in Germany, it's a very big thing. It's a big title to win. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I also felt bad for my partner, though, because Pia Merbach, who I played with, she had some tough times the last 
um, tournaments we played where I always had something else to do, mm -hmm. uh, where I was less prepared than I normally am. And uh, for also for this Ger German championship, I was not as prepared as, for example, for last year. So it was pretty tough. Um, we, we lost in the final in doubles. Um, oh, uh... but I won the singles. Uh -huh. So I could defend one title. And now after German championship, which was just last week, weekend, um, we, we need to, I have to prepare now for, I have now like, what, what is it? Five days maybe to prepare for Bonzini worlds, which is again, a total different table style and everything. Right. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, Listen, it's this, this year is crazy, man. This is the life of a professional loser, and I think we, uh, that term gets used loosely to describe rank in the United States. But it's much more than that. When you're like Tony's a pro, right? Tony travels around; he's a pro, and you're you're a professional athlete. You're a professional athlete. I'm I try. Get, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show something in a second. I want to pull this up here, and let's get this going. Why don't you kind of describe what we're looking at here? <clears throat> oh yeah, that was uh, just two days after the. German championship, I have been booked uh, for a company for a, it was a, like a IT uh, Congress conference. Um, it was a very big event though, with a lot of people. Mm, it was a B2B uh, conference and um, they booked me for playing uh, Beat the Champ, you know, mm -hmm. and then they had two hours to play against me and uh, they gave me a headset so that I also do entertainment, talk to the people, of course, and stuff like that. It was really fun because all the people were like really fun, though. They were good, too. Like, uh, obviously, I didn't lose, but yeah. <laughs> what was the goal? Was, was the goal was... to beat your game or score a point? What were they trying to do? Uh, so uh, they made it that uh, it was actually really funny, though. So uh -huh. when I arrived there, I talked to the... I don't know, the main person there who also decided all of these things. And then I talked about prices with her before too. And I said, hey, look, it's uh, if you do beat the champ, you need a prize because if not, it's like a little bit lame, right? So, <laughs> um, so the tickets at these events, this this event is uh, a week. So the, the, the ticket is like 2,000 euros or something like that. Wow. So the prize, what they said yeah. is when they win against me, they will win a ticket for next year. Oh, um, that's good. But uh, oh, yeah. I was like, you know, normally... I, I told her, like, you know, normally I don't lose, you know, yeah. so most of the people will lose. So yeah. probably yeah. all of them. And I'm like, some like, companies, they give like, I don't know the English word for that, but like for uh, if you only if you lose, then you get still get something like a giveaway. Well, uh, yeah, or like a yeah. Con consolation <laughs> is what they call it. A consolation yeah, prize. Right. A consolation yeah. prize. Uh -huh. But then it was so funny. That was a woman. A businesswoman and she was like ha, no i don't give consolation prizes because then i will be poor after that yeah <laughs> and i was like oh well that's that's the way to think about it that was fun wow um, yeah so no one won but the people had a lot of fun and um they were really like standing in a queue to play against me that's yeah. that's actually a really cool event if it's like that right but yeah you don't always have these kind of events this one was really good i gotta show people i'm wearing my oh yeah uh, I spell it now pronounce fuchs. it is it fuchs or fuchs? fuchs fuchs from foosball experience and we gotta do oh that's awesome i love that i didn't see i didn't know that mm -hmm. you, so we have lynn's instagram and the qr code up here i believe with my fingers pointing and we have her QR code down here. We can support Lynn through her brand, her Fuchs brand. So take a picture of that, of that, open it up, and let's get some merchandise from Lynn. I this thing is like a blanket. It's a comf <laughs> like uh, like I mean a comfortable blanket. It fits perfectly. This is that's nice. good. It's I was really wondering if it's like if it fits. Oh yeah, it fits perfect and it's comfortable and it's really really nice. So hey, you guys, uh, let's let's support Lynn. Uh, we want to. While we have you, because I know it's it's Friday night for you, and, and I know you don't want to spend your entire Friday night talking to Mark Torres, crazy <laughs> Mark Torres. But you know, one of the things we try to do on on this show is get inside 
inside booze. Let's get inside. Let's talk about yeah, sure. who you are. I, I did want to touch on something. And, you know, I'm going to let this play in the background uh, because I think it's it's something for our, our um, uh, people that are here to watch. We're going to yeah. get into the World Cup gold medal team final, United States versus Germany. We're going to get in that for a second. But I think a good segue into that is you play chess. And you play chess at a high level. Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, sure. Uh, so I started playing chess when I was nine years old. And um, yeah, after a while, um, I saw, or let's say it different. Uh, my, my trainer, my coach, I met uh, at the club, saw some potential with me. So uh, we started, he started to support me, to train me and stuff like that. And then um, I played German championships, World Cups and uh, European championships too. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a crazy time though, because I missed school a lot because of oh, just cool. chess tournaments, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I always needed to get a, uh, I, I always needed to ask at the school if I can go you know if they say no i i couldn't but yeah most of the time they were like oh chess yeah well of course you can go just go for two weeks you don't need to go to the school so um, I, want to ask, I want to ask you something so yeah did you have you know there's um there's opening and there's middle game and there's end game did you have a favorite part of your, of chess yeah middle game i think yeah. Yeah. End game was uh, most of the time uh, not my favorite part. I would like to attack more and uh, close it in the in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why I asked that question because I draw the parallels with foosball and I try to see the psychology that your psychology with chess. Uh, I, I call this episode "Be the Machine" because you have a reputation, and your reputation is a machine-like work ethic. You work very, very hard all the time. That you practice, uh, and you, you practice with organized method to practice. Not long ago, I posted something that you posted about training all night to get used to uh, training all night to get used to the way the tornado tournament was going to be played all night. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit? Because I'll be frank with you, a lot of us in the United States have some minor method, but not really a strong method. For a lot of us, practicing for foosball tournament is playing the draw your partner weekly and maybe doing some repetitions, but you seem to take it a step further. So why don't you describe that a little bit on what your training theories are, your training method? <clears throat> yeah, I think actually this is um, something I took from chess though, because I played chess my whole life uh, until I was 18, right? Mm -hmm. So my whole youth, I didn't know anything else. Uh, when my friends were in vacation or did something um, fun, you know, going to some fun camps or whatever, I would be on a chess tournament, right? So I, I didn't know that differently. Even when I was young, I was always on tour. I was always playing chess, training chess, having chess. And chess is if some of you play or, or even are chess players by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know that chess is always preparation and um, after work. So uh, you always have the, the part where you know who you will play against and then you go to the database and then you check out what... So let's say, for example, I play against you. I know that you, I play next day against you or whatever. And then I will check out Mark Torres. Okay, he plays this opening against this. Uh, if I have white, I would check out what you play with black pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which opening, which style you play? Are you more aggressive? Are you more defensive? Are you mm -hmm. waiting for the mistakes? Or are you taking initiative? Initiative? Mm -hmm. um, That's right. Uh, do you like end games more? Maybe you're bad in end games. Then I would try to go into into end games, you know. Or maybe mm. you're bad in tactical um, parts. If the if the positions are tactical, then you're bad in that. So I try to get into tactical uh, positions. Maybe you're very good in strategy, like in strategy strategic uh, positions then i would mm -hmm. avoid them for example and after like uh, when i do this preparation in chess it was always that i had a coach so it um not always always but most of the time so it mm -hmm. was more professional that time so uh so i learned a lot about preparation in that right so and after a game you would always go to your coach and look at the game so you mm -hmm. would analyze it always yeah um so I learned, okay, you have to prepare for the game. And after that, you have to analyze your mistakes, right? So that you can do it better next time. 
so that you can learn from it. So that's my ethic I took from chess to foosball because I don't think that it's any different. So it's of course different from the game itself, but still it is. Uh, it has a lot of in common. So for example, uh, if we talk about players preparation, so if I would prepare against opponents, that's a different part than when I say I prepare for the tournament in a foosball skill wise, right? Yeah. So if it's about training and practice, um, it's more about maybe execution or um, what can I do on the away table? What I cannot on the, um, mm. uh, you know, what can I do on the away table? Uh, what can I adjust uh, or take from my Leonard game to the away table? Or what can I even do on the away table? What I cannot do on Leonard mm -hmm. is also possible, of course, because yeah. uh, for example, Leonard is a um, different play style than on Tornado. And for example, let's say on Tornado, you can, and that's, I think, also why people play that so much on Tornado. But you can play uh, uh, the fakes better, the tap fakes. You know, you tap uh, to the right and go to the middle, for example. Mm -hmm. On Leonard, not so many in average, you know. In average, not so many players does that, uh, are, are doing that. But like in, in on Tornado, in Hall of Fame, so many people are like, so many players are playing fake shots, like the tap and then middle. Yeah. Um, that's something, for example, I use more on Tornado because it's way easier. So, mm. for example, because the ball is so heavy and the men on Tornado are so thick and white, uh, it's easier to control it even when I tap. So if I tap hard, I can get, go back easily, right? But on Leonard, it's much more harder from the ball control because if I tap, it, it, it will be it will easier uh, jump up the ball will bounce, yeah. jump up, bounce, you know, yeah. bounce. Yeah. yeah. So this is something um, also to consider when you change tables and prepare. This is specifically when you do multi table. I have to say hello to Kati because she's in the chat. I saw. Yeah, I see. I see Kathy too. How? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So this is this is also something I took from it. Um, this is like more uh table wise right so you train and practice your tech uh, your technique um and your options what options do i have what 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 are my stre strengths on that table what maybe i cannot do so well because i think i'm an i'm i'm convinced that it's so important that you know yourself better than anyone else so mm. i know what my strengths are i know what are my weaknesses because then I can work with it, right? So yeah. can, if necessary, I have to work around my weaknesses, for example. Um, if I can, I will go and um, try to uh, always um, put my strength in the front, right? So, so, that, so that I can use it as much as I can until my opponent would maybe stop it or force me to do something else, what is, what is out of my comfort zone. So... That there are so many different things. I think I talk a lot. No, about no, it's good. I, but, I, I, it's good. Let me focus. I love. I love you because you talk. I bet you in German. I mean, you you German. You're probably more, which is beautiful. But I want to focus this in because I think it's relevant. So first, I want to recognize Foos TV for allowing us to use this footage. Thank you. You can see all these full uncut matches at Foos TV on YouTube. Um, we've talked about strategy right now. We talked about preparation and how you translated your chess work ethic. Here. Now we're going to get into the World Cup team event. United States, Germany, you guys must have known that this was a possibility. And I want you to specifically, so let's talk about how you prepared for this match. And did the preparation even start here? We're, I paused it to look at the names of the teams. If you don't know mm -hmm. the format, there's, there's two singles and two doubles. And it's a race to 10. And the first team that gets to 40 it wins. And then there's an overtime if you're tied at 40. But um, mm -hmm. having said all that, uh, when you got, look at this right here, how much strategy or, or did you guys have this set up the entire time and you went with your setup? Talk about this this, this uh, comparison right here in Wilkinet. I try to not talk too much about our German strategy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, no, it's, okay. uh, it's like, you know, uh, we didn't really think about the lineup, I think, mm -hmm. too much because mm -hmm. it was not pretty clear how 
the United States will put their line up. I mean, it was pretty obvious that Sullivan will play the second single, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, but everything else is just so you can't put ev anyone yeah. everywhere. And I would not. I mean, that Jackie plays the last double makes sense because she played a lot of Leonards. Uh, right. She lives in Amsterdam or wherever she lives now. Um, so this was obvious. I I wouldn't have think too much about that Hannah would play singles but yeah honestly I didn't think about it before so we were just focusing a lot on ourselves and on our setup and of course we depending on which table we would play against like use a tornado we would think about right but I yeah. think all of it was the most important things happened before we we traveled to Nantes, so we had yeah. we had a really 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 good training camp. I mean, we are Germans, and uh, we are we are very known well known for training and and all the yeah. organizational stuff, right? So yeah, um, we had we had a very good training camp before World Cup where we were practicing the format like the not the format how you call it, the race to 40 so mm -hmm. we practice specific situations like we would for example start okay we we start in the last double with uh four balls um we are four balls behind for example how do we play interesting this? ah that's yeah? good Okay, yeah. so that means the opponents need ten goals. We need fourteen goals, right? Yeah, so how yeah. do you how do you play this in this situation? And then we would, for example, do uh, okay. Now you are uh, in lead, and the other team is back. So uh, then I would I would once I would play uh, I need ten goals, and the other time I would play and need fourteen goals, so that you know and have the feeling how is it to switch tables all the time. And also still, uh, how is it to play when you are in the back or if you are in the lead, right? Yeah. Is that, I'm listening. Is, is I'm that uh, Yvette? I'm not sure. Let me see. Ah, that's Yvette, for sure. <laughs> hi, hi. Hey, Yvette. Thanks for, thank you for joining us. We're getting the insight to how the German machine prepared for this. I think it's fascinating that you guys practice the Race to 40 format. And being up and down is awesome. I mean, that that's uh, that's amazing. Did you guys did you prepare for specific people that you th you assumed were going to be there? I mean, you might have practiced from a, or just you think through the player profile and the skill sets of, of who you were going to play against. Uh, not too much about this. Mm -hmm. it's, it was more about that we get ready on that table um, or on the on the away table, and um, also it was more about the strategy how to play when you're in the lead or how to play when you're in the back and also what is very important in this race to 40 is um how is it how do you handle when your opponent is having a flow i mean mm, race yeah. to 10 is such a long format that uh when your opponent has a flow for three balls let's say uh let's say hannah would pass shoot then she would block shoot and then the other one she would um block on the three bar and then shoot from a two bar that's a run which can happen in a yeah. race to 10 very easily but how do you handle that like because the format is so long let's say for example it's like uh let's say it is um 25 to 22 for USA and then you can feel easily very f fast like oh my god I'm losing this match so hard yeah but it's not true because the format is so long that you that you would like uh think about uh how I just have to like hold it on maybe take a time out to to interrupt the flow and then after that, you can still win this matchup. You know, you can still go from 22 uh, to 30, and the other one has still only 26. You know, you can like. How do you play uh, when you're in the back, and 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 how to stop the flow of the opponent, and how do you when you lead and have the flow when the momentum is on your side, how do you uh, try to hold it as long as possible? 
for yeah. this format. Right? Well, no, I gotta ask, let me ask you specifically about that. So there's functional stuff like taking a time out. There's mental stuff, uh, you know, mental ideas. What, what, what exactly did you talk about? Did you talk about what you think or what you feel or what you, uh, you what you do on the table? Kind of give me the ideas that you worked on. Yeah, it's like more mental, I would say. Like, yeah. uh, for example, uh, when the opponent has the flow or the momentum uh, that you try to, like, you know, uh, stay calm and, and be confident still that you get back to it, that, mm -hmm. that the momentum will shift, for example, to have to trust that it will shift, that you, you have the skills that it will shift, that you, you are able to shift it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about that. Um, it's like, um, it is, it is more like also how to play maybe in a way, if you are able to do so, uh, maybe less risky than, for example, maybe do, do take your time more when, when your opponent has a run, of course, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all the, all the things, uh, that can help to stop the opponent having the momentum. Right. So that, that's, I think it's very point. powerful. It's incredibly powerful because you thought about it and you prepared for it. It's so important. There were plenty of, I'm sure there are plenty of people that went to the World Cup that didn't train specifically for the format. And because they didn't train specifically for the format, they had never thought about how they were gonna feel when they're in that situation. And it, just the fact that you have, a, you thought about it, that you could deal with it and that you could adjust to it. And I think it's critical. I think, um, you know, the top players, the top, the top masters, they know themselves so well, you said it earlier. When you know yourself really well and you know what your tendencies are, especially if you're going down, you're, you're spiraling into a negative space, it's critically important <clears throat> to be able to climb out of that. And most players do not. So let's talk about that. When you feel like you're going, and, and this is an observation, I feel like the real steady part of your game is your five bar. I think it's incredibly steady. I think it's just an assumption, but it seems like you worked on your five bar as much or more than any other part of your game. And it seems to be the part of your game that fails you the least. When I mean fail, maybe your three bar is not going where it needs to go. And this is especially pro singles at Hall of Fame Classic, right? Your five bar seemed to be there the entire time. Now, the, the, when you, if your five bar starts going in a, in, a, in a bad space, what do you do? What do you do in between your ears? What do you do physically? How do you manage a situation where you're not going in the right direction? Mm -hmm. uh, so five bars, very specific. Uh, it's My five bar is my, my core because mm. um, I started... When I started football, I started with uh, five bar training more than on three bar. So at some point in the beginning, my five bar was so much better than my three bar that I invested like one or two years uh, in the last <laughs> five years to like even up a little bit, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was so much. I had so many balls on the three bar, like, mm -hmm. uh, like so much more um, uh, possessions than my opponent, but I would still lose. You know, yeah. and at some point I would have to like, you know, even it up a little bit. So, but um, yeah, my five bar when I, it's, I think, so what many players don't understand, I think, in my opinion, what I see uh, when, when I see amateurs playing um, or beginners, uh, rookies, whatever, uh, it's about um, trust and confidence. Yeah, yeah. But the question is always, where does it come from? The confidence, I mean. Okay, fine. If you're a person who's like crazy and always confident, even you didn't have anything behind it, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'm not judging like, that. That's crazy. I wish yeah. I could, right? um, But for me, I think it's crucial to understand that confidence is coming from a base, which means. When I know that I trained that pass 10,000 times, then I know I can do this. Yeah, so right. even though I would fail or have a bad, bad uh, phase in the game where I don't have a strong five, but I know how to get back to it because I have to trust that I can do it. Uh, I, see. I did this 20,000 times, several hours in many matches against many elite players, against top men and women i can do that even though i suck at this moment i know how to I see i like that no yeah i love so, that um that that's i think that's so so crucial to understand that for ordinary people who 
are not automatically always confident. Um, it comes from somewhere. And this is also something that Kobe Bryant, for example, from basketball was mm -hmm. saying very often that he, uh, he know, he knows it, he can do it. He can, he can do some shots blind because he did it so often. Like also, I love the quote. I don't even know from, from who this quote is, but, um, uh, it is about do it so often that you, Don't do it so often that you uh, can do it right, but do it as often so that you can not do it wrong anymore, you know? And uh, the part about do it so often that you cannot do it wrong anymore is something I believe is just true. Uh, mm. Yeah. But, you had a couple uh, of questions in chat. The young lady, yes. I, I, don't, I, think, I don't know if it's a, a gal or a guy. Uh, how do you train it though? What drills do you do? Please speak mm -hmm. to that, and then and then and Christopher sure. has a question too. Go ahead. It just just a quick comment on the stream. I think uh, the stream is uh, lagging, uh, the video you show, but I'm not yeah, sure do, what do, what the this. others. Yeah, let me do this thing, again. But uh, yeah, so I tried to answer the question: uh, How do I train? So um, I think what many 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 players also underestimate, and I think it's very crucial: stick to the basics. So. I would always train the basics. And this is also something that Kobe Bryant says. And I love Kobe Bryant's uh, work ethic because he was always, um, yeah, I don't know if you know uh, um, Kobe a little oh, bit yeah. from, or yeah, read about yeah. him or whatever. But uh, I think I the work ethic is, is really cool. Uh, he would always uh, stick to the basics, even though he was such a great player. And I, I think I learned from that too a lot because I think, Uh, if you don't stick to the basics, like, for example, what I would do, and I don't think that many people would think that with the level of five bar I can play now, is like, I would, when I want to do a recover training, because I think that I miss some um, crispiness in my five bar, for example, um, I would just put the ball in a specific spot just laying there and then play the ball from this still standing so that I can make sure that my technique is also good enough when the ball is not moving. So for example, my angle from, I, I do a brush series, right? So this is um, the angle. I would check the angle. I would check the speed. I would check um, if, if it's um, accurate the pass. So I would do this from a still standing and would do this 10 times in a row successfully but i would do this to the wall in the different spots so which means the far wall then also the middle wall and the close wall for example um and this also the other way around for the lane pass um and this is something i would do from the still standing and after that i would do the same but from the moving ball from a setup right also 10 times so it's actually very basic training which you do when you begin with foosball but i still do it like i think it's crucial to have the basics in your arms and train it and and still do it so that you always can execute and and be crucial about the moments when when it's tight you know when you go into the matches and it's tight it's three three four four whatever and you have to pass the ball then I am thankful that I did these practice drills, right? And then the other things would be um, that I also, for example, do a lot of uh, other isolated uh, practices. For example, I would um, do an isolated setup training, which is super boring, right? But I would still like do this because the setup is the basic of your five bar. If you don't have a good setup, your five bar's shit, because then you cannot predict when can I do a good pass and when not, when it's not in the right spot in your setup. So I would also do Lynn, setup it, it, it sounds so German and so disciplined and yeah, so wow. German. Um, Crystal Flax wants to know how long you've been playing. Uh, now it is over eight years. It's amazing. All right. So you're not going to believe this. We're almost out of time. 
but we gotta get we get so look let's look, we're gonna forward your match so it looks like um hannah just beat uh lily 10 to 8 and these are four race to tens we get into a doubles match we're gonna start skipping through right so the next match is gonna be um is christina fuchs and liz hill liz hill moore playing against stephanie schmidt and jessica and uh we're gonna we're gonna fast this it gets crazy because we're gonna get to your match in a second Mm -hmm. um this is a back and forth battle Mm -hmm. we get to okay hannah's now playing pia i want to show you guys this full match is available i'm going to show you where it's available right now because we're going to skip around you may hate me for it but i'm not going to drain lynn's entire friday night of watching foosball and talking to me you can see the full uncut match here what you need to know is that we're going to go into the last match it's a doubles match it's going to be um you and more is it you and mora versus um jackie and and keisha yes right, right. That? that's right so so uh it's first to 40 and sullivan do- basically does her job i think she's gonna uh, give yeah here it is it's, so we, we start off with the lead we start I, with the lead. I, I actually i actually want to answer to the other question oh please do please do yes go ahead uh, who do you see as main contender for you in women's singles? Have you matched up against Sally? Uh, I I would love to play against Sally in singles, but we missed each other at World Cup last year. Uh, she was playing uh, semifinals against Cinderella and lost that match. And then I played in the finals against Cinderella. But uh, I think that will be that would be very interesting if we would ever play at the World Cup. And also, I mean, in 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 singles at the Hall of Fame, I would have loved to play against Sullivan, but I got kicked out in the fourth um, against Hannah. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe next time. I, I wish, uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, Europe is very good. Uh, we have very good players in Europe, mm-hmm. so I could, I, I could, uh, yeah at least say five or six names or something but um yeah i would love to play against sullivan one day in singles i didn't do it yet it's gonna be a fun match you guys are very similar and very different all at once what you guys have in common and maybe you've seen the foosball documentary she drills and she drills to um, perfection her five bar passes over and over and over so they become automatic and i think she has a similar quality as you is that she she's so she's so unconscious with her confidence in, in certain passing series that it just it's not it, it never really fails her that, that part doesn't fail her um you guys are you guys will be like two heavyweights uh, when, uh, when come on i mean she she plays since she since she can stand up so she 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 played when she was five years old that's crazy man i mean uh it's, it's, but, but it's great. and i love her but you are the you're the reigning world champion and so she has some more work to do she has some work to do to get there i i have no shame saying i picked her to win singles at the world cup i picked her i put it out there i put it out there maybe uh boldly put it out there on the podcast and facebook i assumed she was going to win it she has more work to do and i can assure you she's going to come back to the next world cup gunning for whoever's in front of her and it's going to be great yeah I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that i mean i talked to her at hall of fame a little bit um got to know her first time really like talk to her because before that at world cup there's just no time to talk yeah. and chill with people right or from different countries at least not but uh i i love talking to her because she had the same visions and the same uh, approach and stuff so it was really nice to talk with her about that and uh yeah, we were also talking about World Cup and stuff, and uh, I'm really looking forward for her to come back. And I, of course, have to make it uh, far too, but yeah. uh, I will still work for it. And then let's see how it will be in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this. You guys are down by three points. You guys have your work cut out for you. And now you got Jackie and, um, and Keisha, and it's you and Mora. Tell me a little bit what's going through your mind uh, you you prepared for this what's happening right now on the table mm-hmm. so uh the game is lagging but i know the game oh, very well true. so i don't know if the uh the uh, the people can me, see it's good but let, let me turn off some stuff in the background and see if um and let's ask chat, them chat, chat can you say uh, can you tell us if you can see the stream the game can is the game it? is the game running smoothly or not? The match is running and 
Uh, I don't know if it's running smoothly or not on your guys' end. Let us know if it's running smoothly. In your end. For me, for me, not. But it's not too bad because I know the I know this part very good. Uh, oh, so, man, running well. So it's my 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 internet, which is bad. Seems like. Um, so right now it's thirty to twenty-eight, and uh, yes. you guys just scored a point. Talk about it. Okay, so this matchup was interesting for me because I played Jackie. I felt at that part at that time, I, I I played her a few times, a couple times. Um, we played um, also at this tournament. We played twice, I mm, think, okay. in women doubles. I'm not sure anymore. In classics, for sure, and I think also in women doubles, but I'm not 100. Did you beat her? Did you beat her the other time? Yeah. Or did she beat you? Okay, you beat her. We okay. beat her twice. Okay. Um. So, but the most interesting part is her five bar, though, because um, she, I think she has a very good five bar, and it helped me a lot that I played her so often already. So I had a clear plan, like what means clear, but I had a plan. Uh, how to block her and i think i i did well in this match so i also i know so Lynn, this... uh, let me let me stop you for one second so yeah there is an idea that telling someone their weaknesses makes them better but there's also a strategy that you don't tell them their weaknesses because you want to hold on to them i'll ask you this question and you don't have to be direct or detailed does she have a tell or a tendency or a weakness in her five bar that you were able to capitalize off of uh that's tough to answer because um i would say it depends also on the history you know okay. yeah yeah so yeah. also i would re i would try to read the game as a whole with her because she's also is she's also a thinker mm -hmm. in my opinion mm -hmm. uh maybe she sits there now watching this and like <sighs> That's so wrong. How no, could you no, no, no. Me? no, no, I don't know. But for me, it's like she's a thinker. I'm a yeah. thinker. So I will go through all the, all the, um, how you say, uh, about, I will think about the phase of the games. How, how did she, what happened when, when she was passing? What happened when she's not passing? Mm -hmm. Would she, you know, wh what would she do? And also, what's also helpful, of course, I know her repertoire, which mm -hmm. means, yeah. um, I know her passing variations. I know mm -hmm. uh, the options she has, which helps when I block, of course. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I would not say that she has a tell in that way. She's too good for that in a way. But um, I would say every player has um, tendencies. Tendencies, mm -hmm. yes. Tendencies mm -hmm. also depending on what you are showing for defense. Sure, that's that's all that matters. It's not just, it's situational, and uh, so some people tend to. Do, we had Michael Stahl on the very first mm -hmm. episode here, and he said, "When I'm stressed, I do a blind, quick brush down. I do it, and he very open, and like it's a it's a weakness of his. And I think by describing it, maybe he was trying to um, get rid of that weakness. But to your point, people will fall into people will fall into tendencies and do similar things. So I think that's it's impressive, and you had beat her twice." Did, were they all very close like this when you beat her or was it pretty commanding when you beat her the other two times at the World Cup? Uh, I think it was not too close this time, mm -hmm. but I mm -hmm. had more close matches against her. Funny it's that we played, I played with Carti against her at work, uh, at the Leonard World Series a couple months later mm -hmm. in the final. So we beat her there too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, my record uh, in the last uh, year was pretty good against her, I think, yeah. if I remember correctly. But it's every time it's tough. Yeah, yeah. Respect Jackie as a player so much, you know. Yeah. And I know that she will try to beat me the next time, of course, and will think of new things. So, yeah, it's like uh, I, I, I really go very prepared when I play against Jackie, full focus, right? Because if I, I'm not focused and 100% against Jackie, that will be... Yeah, that will be tough. Uh, I need my A game against Jackie. That's for sure. Jackie is awesome. She she um, was one of the quickest players to rise from like the beginner level to the pro level, ever, mm -hmm. men or women on tornado. She did very very quickly. I think where you're going to continue to differentiate yourself is you play a lot of foosball. You practice. You're committed to it, and so there's going to be a gap. I mean, some of these guys and gals, frankly, they're just not. 
as disciplined in training as hard as you are. And it's going to, and you think about foosball a lot, right? So you have mind share, time share, it all matters. Um, so here we are, where are we right now in this, um, what's going on, right? We, we close the gap. It looks like it's a one point. It took a long time to get the two points, but you're slowly climbing into this. Let's go a little bit further because I think now we're at the, oh, we're already at 45 minutes. Let's go a little bit further. And then, uh, Let's get to like let's get to where it gets really tight and i want to talk yeah. about so this is a back and forth match i told you guys you guys can see the match well here we go 40 to 39 and uh talk about what's happening here and for my memory jackie was playing better on leonhardt than she was on tornado i think you were out playing her on tornado because i was i was in nantes i did the english commentary yeah what's your, what's your memory of this what's happening I, I do think that Jackie played pretty well on Leonard. She scored pretty good on Maura on Leonard. I yeah. was impressed. Yeah, she um she she is a very good multi-table player in my opinion, and um, she was playing so well in this match that uh, we were behind. Uh, I remember very exactly 39-37 for mm -hmm. Team USA. And uh, she was blocking Maura well, well, zoning was well against Maura. She was scoring on Maura. And uh, at that time, I don't know about the percentage of passing, but I had problems. Like, I, my three bar was not high percentage. I, I, I survived that match because I uh, had so many possessions. Mm -hmm. My soft skills were good in this match. My passing was very good in this match. My three bar, uh, uh, I had like faces crucial moments where I scored very important matches um, uh, very important balls but um, in general I survived that match because my uh, because my five yeah. and my ball grabbing was good so so if, so if it's lagging for you you just scored to make it 40 to 40 and you, you shot a middle and you turned around like you were so happy that you made that point now it's 40 to 40 yeah and, with and, and uh it is, is it win by two at this point? Because you both Yeah, it's win by two, yeah. yeah. So that's why it was so crucial. The crucial moment in this match was when it was 39-37 for Team USA. We needed two points yeah. to go to the uh, win by two. So I remember exactly. I had the five bar. I had the ball on the five bar on Leonard. I passed. I, I scored. Then we went to Tornado. I blocked the ball from Jackie. I passed and then I scored. And it was 39 39 and at that point i was like we will going to fucking win this final because we don't wanna <laughs> lose again against team usa like the last world cup <laughs> yeah yeah i love that you think you said that in your head we are going to f and win this final is that what you said I, don't, I, I think unconsciously i said that but at that point at that phase of the game i was just so in a you know in a tunnel like in a focus uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to give I, I, my, my full attention was nowhere else than at the table. And that's, yeah. I think, is the, the best what you can do. Because if you think about winning, losing, whatever, that's yeah. bad. That's bad for your game. So yeah. this was pretty tough. I was really under pressure. We were really under pressure. But after we climbed that, we climbed that um, wall yeah. of uh, really like they, I mean, Team USA had like two match balls. Or three even i'm not sure yeah. anymore but like oh, yeah. that's crazy right when you have like match balls so yeah so i was i was really happy when we made it win by two and then mawa also came back after that and then yeah we she she also scored the last one which was amazing so yeah so i think we're at the very tail end here and it's uh let me get to the, it's Oh, this is it. Yeah. So it's 40, it's 42 to 41. Actually, it's hard to fast forward. And, okay. It's 42 to 41. And um, more, it's, I'm sorry it's lagging for you. I guess it's, it's uh, on the it's okay. skate side. But uh, you know how this goes. Uh, more I has in the back, and it's very close now. Um, it's going to be a moment of incredible, I guess, satisfaction for you guys. Work so hard for this. Right? Yeah. You guys worked very, very hard for this. We worked hard for that. I, I, I mean, the that we play against Team USA again after we lost the last time yeah. in the final was just perfect. Because 
of course we wanted to play again against USA because we lost the last time. So we wanted to prove that we can do it this time. And we were way better prepared on Leonard uh, on on Tornado than 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 the year before, like uh, yeah. 2019, right? So, yeah. So I think uh, you just won the the World Championship, Team World Championship. You guys are celebrating. I don't know if this is not showing <laughs> up on your screen. You're dancing around. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna put your uh, your link. So Lynn's Instagram is over here somewhere on the upper left corner and her Foos brand, which I'm wearing right now. You got to support Lynn. This is, this is, I love this. I, I take care of this, by the way. I don't wear it everywhere. I don't wear it around the house. I'm going <laughs> to, it's a special occasion sweater, but um, there's so much to learn from you. I feel like we need to do this again. Not, not anytime soon because of your time, but we went through that 45, we went our 50 minutes, went through it fast and you gave us so much information and so many people have so much to learn from your training, from your experience, you're a winner. I mean, you're an incredible champion. Um, Thank you. Any any last thoughts? Anything you want to share? Anything you want to say before we kind of sign off here and uh, and and say goodnight? Uh, maybe I would like to answer to the question yeah. uh, which just came in. How are you? How? Yeah, I trained my ball grabbing. That's also fun. Like 2019. I mean, do you have time? For yeah, a yeah, sure. Two minutes please. Story. Yes, please, please tell it. <laughs> 2019, when we talk about ball grabbing, I was never really a crazy talented in ball grabbing or something. I also practiced that, if I'm honest. And of course, it comes when you play more, then of course you get faster. But like in 2019, I played um, my first World Cup with Lily, which I won with her, right? But before that, we were like, she came to my place and we wanted to like train together and, you know, we never played together before. And I was a newcomer at that time and she was like an old schooler. And um, we were talking about this and that. And then she was uh, showing me one practice how to improve in ball grabbing and like in reaction in general, right? Where you just like kind of a speed ball but without controlling the ball so the um, the main idea is like uh we play against each other and we just try to hit the ball immediately every time we see the ball we try to hit it with the wherever the ball is so this really helped me to like you know get better reactions and and have more the idea of where the ball is going but also what i did is like a lot of um drills like i I, 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 uh, before World Cup, six weeks before the World Cup, I had a training plan for myself. And before every session, I would do a drill where I would do one song on the five bar, only tick tacking, one song on the, uh, on the three bar, only tick tacking, one song where I do like, uh, uh, I would pass in, a, I don't even know how you call zigzag, it. Like, zigzag. Yeah, in a zigzag mm -hmm. um, to have like more feeling for that. Then I would do the same for the two bar and from two to five. So um, this was also something that improved my uh, uh, my ball grabbing. And uh, because for real, I did this for six weeks, almost like four times a day, uh, four times a week. And then at the World Cup, when I played doubles with Lily, Sometimes I didn't know what happened to me, but the ball was under my three bar because my arm just was going there. I, I didn't need to think about it. I didn't need to do anything with it. And if you don't start like Sullivan or Tony or whoever, junior, like when you don't start as a junior and you don't have natural talent for that automatically, then you have to train it to be better in it. I mean... In every sports, you can train something. You can train every aspect of the game. I, it's my opinion. So this is also something I trained. So I was also like three, four years ago, I was so much, uh, I was not as good as today in ball grabbing, for example. And I even know that there's more, I could even do more. So I, when I see other people's reactions and ball grabbing, that's crazy. Like, um, I know that there's like even more to do for ball grabbing. So, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, everybody, this is Lynn Tran. She is a rare breed. She's a professional foosball athlete. You see her uh, QRC code here goes to her 
site for foods. She has great merchandise. She does coaching. She does speaker events. She's a keynote speaker. She does corporate events. And her Instagram, we could all do uh, support her by getting into her Instagram. That's the one in the upper left corner. Follow her on Instagram. It's been wonderful to have you, Lynn. I love you. I do. I mean that in the because your competitive spirit, your fire, your drive, <laughs> how you work hard uh, in foosball. I, that I, I've always loved that type of player. My one of my favorite players, Steve Murray, um, plays with fire. You have an edge to you. You, I see you pumping your fist. I see you raising your hands. I love that about you. That fire, that spirit. We all could learn from that. And I want to thank everybody who came out to listen to Liz. Yeah. This will be this will be available on Twitch. We'll put it on YouTube. We'll put it on we'll put it on our Facebook. And uh, I hope I could have you again sooner than later to um, yeah. do another one of these and we'll, we'll figure out, uh, but this has been episode two, the machine, be the machine. Lynn Tran is the machine. Thank you, Lynn. I want you to enjoy your Friday Thank night. You. Thank you so much for, Thanks for, for having me. Have a good See night. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah.